Two million years ago, our world was a very different place. The geography, for the most part, we would recognise. The life forms, not so much. Across continent and ocean, colossal megafauna stalk their prey. Sabre-toothed cats, mastodon, lumbering megasloths and gigantic terror birds, largest of South America's apex predators. Across plains, tundra and forest, a variety of life thrived. The largest of which are mostly gone today. Meanwhile, on the southern tip of what is now South Africa, a new type of lifestyle was emerging. One not entirely dictated by the whims of the natural world. That perennial battle against the elements and carnivores that dominated the rest of the globe. For there, perched on the edge of that vast continent, coated with forests, teeming with life, events were setting in motion. Events that would irrevocably alter our world forever. We don't know exactly what happened. In fact, nearly all of the details are missing. Such is archaeology. Yet, new evidence only discovered in the last couple of years does suggest that during this far-flung epoch, a highly unusual meeting took place. An unprecedented meeting of minds. Not quite human, but certainly on the way. A convergence of three separate evolutionary lines, all inhabiting the same continent at the same time. One we know well, Homo erectus. It's us, or what we were anyway, a common ancestor for all humans alive today. The other individuals are older, different, but not so different to be unrecognisable, perhaps. One, Paranthropus, is thought to be a distant cousin. Like Homo erectus, these barrel-chested proto-people walk upright, used tools, and crucially, they may have harnessed fire. Could they communicate? Have a conversation, even? We simply don't know. And finally, we have the third hominid found at the site, already ancient by the standards of the time. A relic of the past that walked the Earth from around 4.2 million years ago for around 2.2 million years. For during this time, their days were numbered. This is Australopithecus, and when our ancestors, not quite us yet, but well on the way, arrived in southern Africa, presumably from elsewhere, for a time, these three early humans all inhabited the same landscape. What did they think of one another? Was there a form of respect between them? Recognition of mutual lineage? Or, as has so often blighted our world, conflict? Just maybe it's no surprise that all of our cousins died out where we survived. So much of our evolutionary past remains unwritten, unknown, hinted at by mere fragments found here and there, surviving by mere chance where so many millions of others have disappeared completely. Yet this new find holds the potential to add to that story ever so slightly. Long before Neanderthals, Denisovans and Homo sapiens walked the earth together, interacting with one another, interbreeding even. It seems a much earlier meeting happened too. 
between a common ancestor of all of these and its cousins. A time when many human species walked the earth. Let's take a look. Hello folks, I just want to say a massive thank you to the sponsor of this video. A long time supporter of History Time, Voices of the Past, and now my latest channel, Pete Kelly. It's The Great Courses Plus, my go-to for when I'm researching videos. Whether it's brushing up on existing knowledge or embarking on entirely new avenues, The Great Courses Plus has it all. Thousands upon thousands of lectures by some of the greatest university lecturers in the world on practically any topic you can think of, with a huge amount of history, archaeology and anthropology to choose from. You can access it seamlessly on your phone, your tablet, your computer, and now we've teamed up to offer you a free trial. What have you got to lose? Just head on over to thegreatcoursesplus.com forward slash Pete Kelly or follow my link in the description below. Honestly, I've listened to hundreds of these lectures by now. They are so good. Recently, however, I've been fascinated by the ancient civilizations of North and South America. In particular, these incredible courses by Dr. Edwin Barnhart, covering everything you need to know about the archaeology, society and history of the New World. You can check it all out here. If you're anything like me, you won't regret it for a second. Now, back to the prehistoric world. South Africa, site of so many conflicts in recent years. Wars and tensions between ethnic groups run deep here. Perhaps none more so than the sprawling metropolis of Johannesburg, home to many millions of people. Not far from here, however, is, as far as the human story is concerned, one of the most important archaeological landscapes in the entire world. A UNESCO World Heritage Site, called with good reason the Cradle of Humankind. One of Africa's two great sources of hominid fossils. More than 900 having been uncovered here since excavations first began just under a century ago from five different species of proto-humans, spanning millions of years. Something about this place kept pulling people back. Some very different to us today. This collection of limestone cliffs, a landscape largely unchanged for eons, is the Drimelen Paleocave system. Just in the last couple of years, within these labyrinthine passages, yet more discoveries were made. Unfortunately, conclusive dating in this region sometimes proves problematic, as caves periodically collapse into one another, skewing the layers. Drimelen, however, is a bit different. In a small cavern deep beneath the earth, sediment and fossils were found here that can be conclusively dated, all to a very short window of time. Amazingly, three entirely separate human lines, all apparently living at the same time. Australopithecus is the most primitive of the trio its lineage dating back to at least 3.3 million years ago. Combining ape-like features like long tree-climbing arms, along with human-like ones, its exact relation to modern humans remains unknown. The last of its kind, likely dying out not long after its time around the caves of South Africa. For this is an evolutionary dead end. Next, we have Paranthropus, an offshoot of the human family tree, though not considered a direct human ancestor. 
known for its large, powerful jaws and teeth, perfect for a diet of nuts, seeds, roots and tubers. This distant cousin lived from around 2 million to 1.2 million years ago. The remains at Drimmerlen being the earliest known anywhere. Finally, we have Homo erectus, the first known ancestor of humans to have human-like body proportions, and the first to appear outside of Africa. The other earliest examples being found in the Caucasus Mountains 1.85 million years ago. This was a very successful, widespread species. There is an issue though, one which has led some scientists to disagree with the findings. Only a small part of a skull has been found, belonging to a toddler, only two or three years old, and one which according to some doesn't necessarily show all the features usually associated with Homo erectus. Perhaps this was a slightly more primitive ancestor species, on the way to being Homo erectus, but not quite there yet. Much like primitive proto-Neanderthals, such as Swanscombe Man, found in southern England. If the cranium described at Drimmerlin Cave is Homo erectus, it would push back their earliest known occurrence anywhere in the world by more than a hundred thousand years. Suggesting African origins, perhaps in the Rift Valley, from where they spread far and wide, to the south and the north. Some have even suggested Homo erectus originated here in South Africa, before spreading to East Africa and finally out of the continent though the abundant existence of the other hominid species throws doubt on this. We do know that two million years ago was a prolonged period of very high climate variability in East Africa, and sometimes cited as the very reason our ancestors evolved so quickly, forced to do so because of changing geography, those that couldn't adapt to the changes dying out. Other animals, primarily zebra and springbok, migrating into the Drimmelin region at around the same time, further supports this theory. So, what happened to that Homo erectus toddler? And how did it end up with the bones of these different human species? And where were the others of its kind? Had it been adopted? Was it food? So far, we simply don't know. Remains from this time are extremely few and far between. As far as early hominins are concerned, we only have scraps of evidence to go by. The physical remains of Denisovans, for example, are mostly known from a single cave system. Nevertheless, from this time onwards, Homo erectus, Paranthropus, and stone tools begin to appear all over South Africa, relatively in abundance. They lived alongside each other here for more than a million years to come. Surely some kind of accommodation must have been reached during that time. If not interbreeding, like we know Neanderthals and Homo sapiens did later. Australopithecus, however, simply couldn't keep up. We have to ask the question, did the two newer human groups band together against the old? Could the two younger species interact? Both used tools, and there's an argument they both used fire. Perhaps the reason they became more advanced in the first place. surviving down from the trees with predators around using this new technology. Whereas Australopithecus remained to a certain extent tree-bound. 
the last days of Australopithecus and the dawn of Homo erectus witnessed here nearly two million years ago, entangled in and around a South African cave system, are now definitively putting to rest the old idea of one species simply going extinct to be replaced by another. The truth is far more fluidic, complicated, overlapping. As late as 117,000 years ago, Homo erectus still lingered on in parts of Indonesia, just as our modern human ancestors began to walk the Earth. Maybe they met too. Only time will tell what more developments are unearthed. You've been watching Archaeology News. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.